I certainly hope that Mumia will finally get his day in court. I pray for that. Uh, he's an innocent man. He's a peace-loving man. He would be such a blessing to have in the world. I, I see him as something like a, you know, like a Nelson Mandela type to me, a tremendous leader. I mean, look what he's done from, from, from death row. It's, a, it's amazing the accomplishments he's pulled off from death row. Think what he could do in the world. Why do they want to keep this man in here? This man is a gift. I'm here today at uh, Philadelphia City Hall with uh, J. Patrick O'Connor, the author of uh, The Framing of Mumia Abu-Jamal, a new book that has just been released today. Uh, what's the local Philadelphia media been like? You've been, you and your uh, professional publicity agency have been contacting them for a long time now, trying to hook up any interviews. Uh, how have you been received by them? Pretty much shut off. Uh, this is published by the Chicago Review Press, which has been in business since 1970. It's done hundreds and hundreds of valuable, good books. And the uh, imprint's called Lawrence Hill Books. But they haven't set up one mainstream media uh, interview or, or newspaper uh, you know, interview either. So we're, we're over in Philadelphia. Yeah, that's really a shame. Um, so if, if, if the uh, media was fair and they were trying to show both sides like they're supposed to do, and you had your uh, five minutes of uh, on mainstream television here in Philadelphia, what is it you would want people in Philadelphia to know about this case? You know, they got the, from the beginning, it was a set up to, Hang this crime on some on one man, Mumia Abu Jamal. He happened to be there. The police officer was brutally arresting his brother at the time. He runs over to the scene, and I think is shot by Officer Faulkner as he arrives, arrives, arrives right there to where Faulkner and his brother Billy Cooker having a situation. A passenger in Billy Cook's car gets out, named Kenneth Freeman. He's an army veteran, burly guy. And Kenneth Freeman committed this committed this crime. And why they why they were hanging on Lomia, I don't know. I mean they had Freeman right there. Within hours of the shooting of uh, Faulkner, police came to Freeman's house, arrest, arrested him, brought him in for questioning. Their main witness, uh, Cynthia White, the prostitute, Picked Freeman out of the lineup several times as the, uh, the police headquarters. But they didn't want Freeman, they wanted Mumia. So that's what Philadelphia got. They got a rigged deal from the very beginning. Uh, one of the most corrupt officers in Philadelphia history, Alfon Inspector Alfonso Giordano, was the arresting officer at the scene. Uh, the prosecutor didn't bother to play fair. He used perjured testimony of Cynthia White. They uh, coerced uh, Veronica Jones, uh, the police coerced her to change her testimony to say she didn't see somebody running from the scene. The one person who did a trial say, say they saw somebody running from the scene, Desi Hightower, he's the only, only witness in the entire case that was polygraphed. He was polygraphed for like over an hour by the prosecutor's office. So the case just to me, it just, uh, it's never passed the stink test, and it's, you know, we're 26 years into it. One thing that's really uh, unique about your book that you're adding now is the is uh, your analysis about the importance of Robert Harkins and his account. A lot of what you explain as far as a scenario yeah. of Faulkner being shot is based on what, what he said, right? That's right. In the uh, police, police reports taken from Robert Harkness, he's a United Taxi cab driver, he was going by the scene, going by the VW and the police car that night, as Freeman and the officer started to tussle. He's then, he then watched them go to the ground, and he watched the shots, the, two, the shot being fired into the back, and then the officer rolling over, and he saw the other. He said two shots. This is all based on police reports that Joe McGill, Prosecutor McGill, didn't want to use, didn't use at trial, that he kept hidden from the jury that there was a 
Um, there was a witness that saw the officer in a fight, a fight with a very large 225, estimated 225 pound black man with an afro and wearing an ar a green army jacket. Well, none of these things fit Mumia Abu Jamal. He was 170 pounds, thin, a thin person, six foot tall, but thin. He, he wore a uh, different kind, he didn't have a green army jacket on. He had a pair in dreadlocks, which can't be mistaken for afro. And plus it doesn't, uh, just doesn't fit his nature to be involved in something like this. So Freeman's the man and they let him go and they let him go up until the night of the uh, Osage Avenue, the night that the police firebombed moved the move house and took out that entire 60 other row houses in the process. That night, in 1985, they went and got Kenneth Freeman, bound him, gagged him, stripped him, and took him to a jinx lot here in Philadelphia, shot him full of drugs, killed him, left him for dead there. The coroner comes by and says it's a heart attack. No investigation of Kenneth Freeman's death on the night of the move bombing is ever made. So, I think a lot of things point to Kenneth Freeman. Uh, Billy Cook, his partner at the kiosk stand, said in his affidavit in 2001 that Freeman was with him in the car and that Freeman was involved in the killing. I am absolutely innocent of the charge I was charged of. I'm absolutely not guilty of the charges I were convicted of.